and uh, yeah, thank you. I'll repeat it, huh? So last time we had a, a final state machine that have a state and input, and we changed that to vectors. Z is vector, X is vector. Then we don't need any symbol anymore. That's a huge revolution. It's like you are crossing two schools, one in symbolic school, which is a computer science is based on. Another is neural network, which is a, a traditionally uh, electrical engineering is based, based on, all right? And then we cross two schools. Huh? And then we do this vector. Once we have vector, vector, then we start having this neuron in the brain. And the neuron of the brain does not do symbols directly. Huh? Neuron brain is has vectors. And I, I will continue that one, all right? So what is important conceptually is symbol to vectors. That's one. Second, uh, and in order to, to understand it, I say unfolding, unfolding time. Unfolding time is not that difficult, but you see that we have snapshot at time t minus one, we have a fa, they have another snapshot of fa at time t, they are not a small, have a tan T plus one, you ba, 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 ba. That view is very, very important, all right? And make you more understanding. It's like you have snapshot of T, your baby time, second, one second, your brain, second, second, your brain, third second, your brain. In fact, one second is not enough, all right? In our brain, you are at least on the uh, time snapshot that's at one millisecond. Uh -huh one millisecond, uh, at least one millisecond, that's biology. Because every millis millisecond your brain changes. Uh, amazing, amazing. Um, that's why it's exciting time. AI is changing, uh, ch uh, AI is changing. And, um, and I'm uh, really happy that we can teach this kind of uh, simple but powerful things here, all right. Then, then once you have that one, and I want to write it, so that using um, this one, I want to rewrite it, all right? So, so basically, suppose I have a state input, all right? That's vector, originally this vector, but actually I have a Y there, all right? I have Y. And then I have, this is time T zero. In time T1, I have a Y115, all right? Y11, I, this is IJ, many, many, but randomly initialized it. Then I have a Z1, X1. Huh? I will explain how you link this one. The next time you have time T2, you have a Z2, X2. Right, that's the input. But you have another neuron that five. This neuron is one, two. Next time, time T3, I still have a Z3 and a X3. And another neuron is called one, three, and so on. So the issue is that how I can link this. We see that. Because originally your brain, the cells are not connected, all right? And how can I, this one link to this, all right? How can I link? This is called Hebean learning. I write it down, all right? Called Hebean learning. We started last time, but we didn't give the detail. Hebean learning. Hib is a neuroscientist, and he had an idea, he said that that's what he said, and the people like his, what he said, and they call it name after him. He said neurons that fire together link together. That's what he said. Huh? 
but he did not give you much about the detail, all right? Much detail. Say so basically, the neurons that want to fight together, they link together, which is true. And the biology does that, all right? And uh, so in, interestingly, let's see that about. Suppose I have uh, this neuron, and these many neurons are fighting inside. This is a vector, right? This is a vector, right? And this is a vector, and I have this. This has many, many vectors. Vector, 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 vector. Then this is a particular neuron, particular neuron. Each neuron is a vector. So you may have many, many neurons. And, and right now, suppose this neuron fire. And how this neuron fire? It's just lucky. There are so many inside, right? Huh? There are so many here, many neurons, each y, i, j, uh, corresponding to row and column, row, i, j column in our FA, all right? But in biology, you don't have a row and column. But to simplify, we just have a row and column, so that's easier for you to understand, all right? Then particular ij, means this i equal to one, j equal to one, it happened to be closest to this vector, all right? Happened to be just near. Then our human learning will enable the, this vector, this vector will be copied into this vector. And it becomes perfect. Right? It's a, this neuron will copy this one and just take this vector. So this become a perfect. I used to be just uh, close and uh, I'm the closest one and I just become recruited. I totally recruited by this vector. So become linked. So next time, if this one fire, I become perfect. I'm the perfect match. At the beginning, I was lucky. I was the closest match. After learning, all right, linked together. I copied the weights into this, and I become perfect. All those guys, other neurons, cannot do better because they did not learn. They did not fire. And I fired because I'm the nearest one, and I copied that over. So once I copied it over, I become the perfect match <coughs> for that particular input. All right? Any questions? I only talk about Kevin at this point copy. All right, then suppose next time you have an input, all right, this is like another image. This is like your muscle, and like I'm talking. And uh, this, in this is input, if this is the input, you always going from left to right, left to right, because time between these two times is like one millisecond, all right? And um, you cannot go back into this, back into the same time because these neurons they cannot talk to each other because it's the same time slice, right? You cannot talk to neuron in the future because that didn't happen. You can only talk to the neuron of a previous time. You cannot talk to this one early because it's already passed. This is one millisecond away and you can only talk to this neuron. And when this is fired, this is one state, huh? and this is state, and this particular one is already committed to this pair. And this one is landing originally. All these neurons are landing. And this neuron happened to be close to match for this guy, all right? This pair. And I say, I copy. So the heavy learning right now, to simple is only copy, simple version is that copy at first firing. Why you are firing? Because I happen to be nearest to that one. I copy, I just copy that one, all right? Then the next time, there's another vector coming in, and uh, typically these two will not be as, as good match because there's another ve random vector because you have many, many neurons. Each neuron is a vector. Happen to be closest to this one in typical because you are, you are crying, and your images are changing, all right? You are watching your beautiful movie outside your mom. This is the first time uh, you came out, and that's something that you don't understand. You start watching the movie, all right? Because doctor, you know, doctor was busy, all right? Your mom was happy, all right? This is cute baby, huh? So this is the third neuron start to copy. And ba ba ba. Beautiful, beautiful. Keep doing that, all right? Until the neuron run out, all right? Very soon you'll run out. But once I have run out, we talk about, then you still use the same rule. 
the nearest neighbor will start to learn. I'll get to that, all right? Nearest neighbor will do better than just copy. And we'll get to that, all right? Okay. All right. Then I'll go to the next one. We unfold time, right? We symbol become better, then we unfold time. This is a two big things, big things, all right? All right. Uh, revolution will not be really complex, I tell you. It's just very simple idea, but it's hard to think about it. It's like a Copernicus time. He said that, Copernicus said that the Earth is not a center, and the, the sun is the center. Then people just laugh at him. <laughs> yeah, jerk. <laughs> He's not jerk, actually. He has a telescope. He observed. He observed all the star trajectory. He said, sun is the center, and everybody laughed at him. Right now, I'm saying that you need to have an FA. You learn that, that, and right now, everybody laugh at me. or ignore me. And they know me, all right? They respect me. They don't laugh at me. They just ignore me. Ignore. Just like a Copernicus, Copernicus is crazy and John Wayne is crazy. All right? All right. Then let's do example. All right? Let's do a simple example. I give you a very simple example. Example of emergent effect. I would say last time. I right? will do emergent effect. And I already said that FA originally does not, uh, write it down, does not have any internal representation. You know, people will hate me, I tell you. I will have a very respected colleague uh, at the University of Michigan in Arbor. And I said uh, that uh, we do not have a symbol in the brain. He just walked away from me right away. He did not talk to me anymore. And we were talking. Um, I said that uh, I think that we do not have a symbol in the brain. He just walked away. If you have a symbol in the brain, right? No, you can't. You have only images. <laughs> so we have only images. Huh? We don't have symbols. But, and he just did not listen to me. That was about 20 years ago. He just falling behind. Falling behind hopeless, I tell you because we move away from what his traditional thought, all right? We just move away. So let's look at example. Originally, we have a sigma, we have a Q, and there are symbols, all right? Because symbol need to be composed by a human being, and different shape of symbol was considered the same. That's at the beginning of our, summit, our last class, all right? So suppose I do a symbol right now, all right? So this is our FA. Uh, I just use a symbol, all right? I start with a symbol because human can think for the sim symbol very well, all right? Think very well. But once you have a vector, you get really, really feel hard, extremely hard. And the brain is, has a language for symbols. The brain does not have language for vectors. Not many, a little bit. It's called vector. And we have numbers for each component. So right now, that's our B, huh? B, B, and this is B, B, huh? See that? So, so suppose that's the F B, huh? And you probably know the start from here, right? If A, I go to here. If A, you get back, dum dum dum. And if A, you go to so A is horizontal. B is vertical. Do you see that? So in fact. This is the state. Uh, maybe I, I, I put a circle there. I said, how about that one, all right? This one, this is double circle. This state is you have, what? You have zero, zero, one, huh? You call it A and B. So over here, dun, dun, dun. Over here, you have even number or odd number of A, anybody? How many, do we have an even number or odd number of A here? Odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. So this is called odd number of A. 
Make sense? All right. How about the number of bees? If you have an odd number, we go, we go to down, downstairs. If you go to uh, even, you go to upstairs. So downstairs have an even number of bees. Upstairs, you have uh, uh, downstairs you have odd numbers of bees. E upstairs you have an even number of bees. Huh? Then on the left you have even number of A's. On the right you have even uh, odd number of A's. So this one you have odd number of A's and even number of B's. All right, the same thing. Here you have odd number of A's and odd number of B's. Here you have even number of A's, even number of B's. Here, anybody help me? This one, what happens in terms of odd number or even number of A and B? Anybody? Uh, even number of uh, A's and odd number of B's. Yeah, even number, odd number of A's because going down, even number of odd number of B's and even number of A's. All right, so this is a very pretty picture. Then we do uh, uh, FA. All right, we do FA, and the original we have FA. We draw symbol first. Symbol, do symbol first. That's what we did before, all right? So, one, two, three, four. Why do I do this? Because we have four states, all right? So what we did is this is a Q and a sigma, huh? and we have a, we have a, Q, uh, zero, zero. We have Q, one, zero. We have Q, zero, one. We have Q, one, one. Then we have here, have its input, have A, and the input B. All right? See that? All right. All right. Then I said we want to, we just don't want to talk to uh, people that only use the uh, symbols. We want to use the uh, vector. How about this is the vector? Two pixels. Two pixels. All right. So this is pixel, two pixels, zero, one, this is one pixel, five, this is one another pixel, five. And you may have many. You have like uh, or any number of uh, pixel, five. You have A, B, C, D. Uh, right now we just only two, two vectors. Two vectors, you can have uh, two bytes. Actually, two bytes you can represent. You, have, you can represent that one, one. All right. And we don't need it, but image you can have like two pixel filing together. And for this one, we want to use vector two. So we use uh, zero, zero, one. And we have used three muscles, all right? Maybe I just use, uh, use this one to say, say two pixels. And here, I have three muscles. I use red here so you can see that's very, very important. I have a three muscles <laughs> and many muscles may fight together. So I write with zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, and one, zero, zero. I just use a, a particular uh, happen to be this coded. This coded is actually based, based on biology, all right? That's uh, how your body builds up, all right? All right, so those are the red ones. Then uh, traditionally, we have a symbol before and uh, right here, all right? This one will used to be like Q10, Q, this is going to here, A, right? B will go to down, Q01, and uh, I have a, this is go back, Q zero zero, have a Q one one, have a Q one one, Q zero zero. Check with me if I made error. All right, Q like uh, Q eleven. If you get A, you go to Q zero one, and Q one one you get B. You go to Q one zero. Did I make error? Did I make error? All right, all right. I didn't. All right, I pause. Then I use vectors. This is, a, this is Q01, Q01 and 010. Do you see that? 010, all right? So I use underscore, all right? Vector. And I put that in, I put it in here, all right? I put 
there, I just use that muscle uh, pattern basically instead of uh, symbol. So I just do it in, in our coding. This is look up from here, all right? Look up from what uh, we had here. Any question? Because like this, why have this one? Because one zero is this muscle pattern. I just put the muscle pattern here, all right? So now at this point, I replace everything, every symbol by vectors now. All right, we learned that in calculus, right? Vectors. Right. Without that symbols, look at that. Oh, this is really hard. Think about it, you can imagine. I take that, all the symbols away. I have only zero, one, zero, one. This is like a mess, right? But it's not mess, it's from our effect. You can see that. That's why if you look at the uh, uh, brain image, you know, it's like a mess. And the neuroscientists really get lost, I think. They got lost because they don't know automata. They should come here. They should come to 460, but they are too busy. Sorry, they are too busy. They don't come. They don't come. They're not in computer science, all right? Many neuroscientists are in engineering, but they are not. Very unfortunate, right? You are very fortunate. If you any friend, they are neuroscientists, you say, John Wen was talking about it's unfortunate that you did not come to 460. They will laugh at you. All right. All right. Now, then we have a table, transition table, right? And that transition table will be like that. Then I just do that. Suppose uh, I, I, this one, I need to match this pattern, all right? Suppose I need to find this pattern. This is, this is Z, all right? This is the A. So originally I have a Q00 A, is that the symbols, huh? Symbols. That's our old story. And I use equivalent symbol. This current comes to zero, zero, 001, see that? and zero one. That's our Z and F. That's vector. See that? All right. That I will assign um, Y neurons, that's internal representation of Y neuron. That's called Y one. Right. And uh, that's the vector. I use red. Red you see easier usually, otherwise it's a hard brain, it's a hard to do. Right. Then we should look at all the pairs. Do you see that? And all the pairs. All right, do that. All right. Q00P. I will Q00B, Q still there, right? Zero, zero, 001, right? And B is one zero. All right, F is one zero. Do you see that? So that's a vector. So instead of a symbol, two symbols, I have five dimensional vector. And that vector corresponding to state and input. State, muscle, input, pixels. <laughs> and I say this is the winning neuron, happens to be before all the winning neuron originally is random, right? And this is a close match for this one I call uh, one two, right? Then I continue on to one zero, um, and uh, I say zero, one, zero, zero, one, check if I made an error, all right? Check if I made an error. And I use that here too, all right? Uh, uh, now. Originally, I said that we do this one, we just do a program match, symbol, match. Here, we start to use vectors, vectors, vectors. This is internal vector. This is our internal one. And we will become this vector because once this one input, and I just copy, copy to this vector, all right? And I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go eight here. Two, one, one. B, uh, Q11B will be equivalent to uh, 
q of one is one zero zero. P is one zero. You can ask you use that there too. All right, so that it is that is that. And that will be cool. I mean, you know we have the last one is why, why second row, fourth row, huh? fourth row. Any questions? I did not write everything, but you can see that I start to use eight neurons, uh, eight neurons to remember the each vector input into Z and X and corresponding to symbol of state and the vector. And I start to use this, this corresponding to this vector. And then, and once I have this coming in, all I need to find uh, uh, those vectors coming in, right? I want to find who is the nearest neighbor among these uh, neurons, right? And uh, picture-wise, picture-wise is what we had before. Picture-wise is like that. Suppose I have a, like a Z coming in that has a, like a zero, zero, one. And I have an X coming in and like zero, one. Huh? And I want to find that Y, I, J, which IJ will match the best. And uh, if it match the best, and I will use the weight of WZ of that particular neuron, and I have a weight of WX of this particular neuron. In fact, if you just directly copy, that is the weight. WZ is for top down, WX is for bottom up. It's top down from top, bottom up from this one, right? This is three dimensional, this is the second two dimensional. Then this one fire. Uh, he said, ah, oh, I'm the best. And then he copied over. Then he said, when's the fire? The next time, next time, this is stuff to fire, right? This is why you have time, like t minus one, t, t plus one. This muscle stuff to fire. This muscle says, this is the, suppose I have a z and x, z and x zero one, that's a. A will go to Q10. So Q10 is 010. So this is 010. Right? Then this neuron starts to fire. This neuron fire, this neuron fire, and this neuron starts to connect this way. Not this way, because this is not firing. But connect to this way. So the winning neuron will, will link to this way. This neuron will fire. All right? So winning neuron, suppose we have a binary only. And this will be fine. If you have pixel here, all right, you have pixel, um, then you can do prediction of pixel, all right? Um, for example, suppose I have, a, suppose I have a, a, so the next state to zero is um, uh, this one, right? And depend on what's the next input. The next input supposes B. B is one zero. Then you put it one zero there. You see that? All right. Now, if I already do this transition and from here to here and go down, and that one will go to Q11 here, but then this from here, this Y neuron will predict the pixel. So, in fact, our FA can predict input. All right. Uh, Original FA cannot predict because symbols are not related. But if I have a vector, I have internal representation. The internal representation can pick, predict what the next input is. All right. But that's only a side story. All right. So now I want to give you a overall. Give a table. For FA. Our FA is M rows in columns. Huh? Right? So when we had, so when we had is, let me see, we have uh, oh. four rows, two columns. All right? Any questions? All right. Then I want to see that how many neurons, number of Y neurons. How many? Anybody? 
Suppose I want to learn FA like that. Huh? I have four rows and two columns. How many Y neurons you need in order to really learn this FA perfectly? Eight. Eight. Very good. Is M times N equal in our case is four rows times two is eight. Eight neurons. Right. If you learn the FA perfectly, then this is, a, this is a big story, all right? Just hold. Suppose this is not this FA. This is your human word. Very complex, all right? Those images you see, uh, if these are images you see, many pixels. And those cues are your muscle, all right? Your cry, your wing. Uh, win the lottery, and you play, you fight, you eat, those are the muscles. That's huge FA, and then you're huge FA. You have so many neurons, if you remember, and that FA is learned. That's how you learn it, right? You learn your life, and many, many neurons. And I'll give you something that's more and more uh, interesting. And this is our quiz, right? So I put a quiz here, right? That's the input is not perfect, right? Quiz seven, right? If X, maybe I, maybe I just change another paper. It doesn't matter. I want to put it in here so they can see clearly. Right? So the quiz seven said that suppose I have input that zero one, not zero one, perfectly. But zero word, zero wing is what? Is B or A? Anybody still remember? Zero wing is A, huh? One pixel. And by his noise, zero is not zero, but zero point one, sometimes it's positive, zero point one, negative. Those are the noise, all right? It's because it has noise in zero. And you may have also noise in one. You see that not perfect word, but rather plus or minus this. So you have a, this is like you have different kind of noise. Huh? Signs are different, maybe magnitude may not be point one. And you have many, many comes in. And then many, many comes in, and I have only one weight. I have only one weight for that pair, right? So for that X, for example, then I give you the I have only one way. You may have noise in X, not perfect zero one. You have noise in Z, and not perfect zero zero one, like that. I only say X, but same for uh, for Z, all right? So same for Z. Same for Z, I just. What can you do to denoise? I have only one way that need to look at this noisy image but the, the base was, uh, was clear, but just contaminated by small amount of noise, All right? What can you do, anybody? Denoise. Even though in this case, I have one, two, three, four, then plus minus, I have eight vectors. Noisy vectors, eight vectors, but I can only have one, two value for that X. What do I do? Figure it out, right? This one has noise. You see that? I have noise. And I have only five components. And this one um, may have noise. And let, let's look at this part only. I just put it here. And I have only two numbers. And two numbers, how can I remember all these eight numbers? You have eight here, right? Zero, one. And about his noise. You don't have perfect zero, one. I hear you have a noise version. What do you do? Uh, Louder. Anybody help me? You round to zero or one. What do you do? You, you have brain. You don't know. The brain would don't know what, what's noise. It, brain do not see that. Brain only sees this one, zero, plus minus this one. Brain only see one, plus minus this one. Can you take an average? Yeah, who said average? Who said that? It was me. What's your name? Jameson. Anderson, this is exactly 
what pain is doing. Exactly, I tell you. Almost exactly. All right? So, average. In our brain, average over time. All right? Average over time because we do not have luxury of remember of the every image. And the brain was using biology to average all those factors because I win. I win for this, I win for this, I da 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 da, maybe multiple times, and I don't know, but I just happen to win. And I start to use that factor to average my weight, basically. And using average through time, I call incremental, incremental average through time. All right? So, any objection? You said maybe not. All right, maybe how do I uh, uh, average? I maybe you do a voting. I voting who is the the center, you know, center in the cloud. This is like cloud. You don't have luxury to do voting because you're just live in real time. You cannot remember all these vectors in life. No, you don't have luxury to collect these images as in a pack of uh, images. Then you do a voting. No, 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 no. We just do real time. All right. So we average, and we have a quiz. Bang, 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 quiz, right? So give your answer, right? And I will ask, we just give your answer for denoising. Right, and uh, then I I take time. What's the time now for the class? Yes. Right, it is today, and the time is three fifty-five. Three fifty-five. Yeah. All right. You see that? Should be at the front. Yeah, we can see it. Chris seven, all right? So give your, uh, uh, yeah. All right. And uh, then the more you see, see that the more you see, the less contaminant you have because noise is, uh, is like plus minus, plus minus like that, all right? Like that happy salt noise. So that's how brain becomes the more you learn. It's like you practice, right? The Zimshin will say the practice makes perfect. Why? Because we do practice. And some people say, oh, the boring, why we do practice? The more practice you do, the more denoise that brain does and gets better and better. And that's do automatically, all right? Do automatically in your brain and then you, you don't really need to uh, uh, really go to school to do that, right? Because that's your, your brain from your baby. So humans, you start from meanings, right? Huh? The meanings as inference. Baby done, huh? And uh, in computer science, I don't know how many people really understand the uh, uh, importance of what I teach here. Um, I will put on uh, YouTube that many people uh, probably can overlook it. And uh, computer science, we have grammar. Huh? And trying to be independent. These meanings. That's all you continue learning. Like. And that's bad actually. Uh, because our images are vectors. And we have grammars. We have a regular grammar. We have uh, uh, later on. We have a kind of free grammar, 
We have a uh, 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 content sensitive grammar. We'll talk about the uh, uh, general grammar, the general grammar stream up here because uh, independent with the meaning. That was a long track, you know. The long track, you know, we have already uh, got into this, we just start, but we can do uh, some limited simple, we cannot do more actions. Right? And uh, then, then this FDFA will break away of that, right? So the FDFA. Means, Embedded in pixels. I use just details, pixels, and maxel. Your baby time, you start to just learn. You cry and you eat. Those have the meaning, all right? You see, those basically have meanings, right? No symbols, but once you have the symbols, right? Is grammar symbols, right? Is grammar symbols. They are they are loose. They are loose based on symbols. Then you you don't have meaning because independent is that's a problem. Right? problem. But maybe very useful our simple machine before. All right, simple machine before. So that's the uh, the, the uh, what I like to teach in through the FA. All right, not much, but you already got. I would say maybe Copernicus time, all right? Copernicus time that sun is not a center. Sun goes around the uh, earth and it comes from east and comes down from the west. And everybody say yes, no brainer. So now John said that independent meaning and people are getting there. This is what we want. No, 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 I said wrong. You should embed with meanings. And people just confuse that. So very, very basic idea. So basic that people take it for granted. It's just like this, the Earth is the center of the universe. People take it for granted, right? All right. Now let's move on. If you are interested, um, maybe you can talk to me after that. And for those who are interested in the, uh, in the honors college, uh, you can do a little bit implementation of the EFA and it's just very simple program. Right. So now I move on to the good old fashioned computer science, all right? Grammar for languages, right? What kind of language? Not natural languages, but computer language, all right? Let's do that. Uh, every language in Sigma star. And we define a language, right? And we do recursive definition as we did before. We have a rule. Suppose A is in the language, uh, and we have another rule that if X is in the language, then you have uh, BX, uh, BX, XA, and X, B, R, O in L. That's our loop, right? So then, uh, then how do we find out what kind of language uh, we or we may have, right? We already did that in the in the in the, in the early uh, uh, exercise, right? And we want to use this law to write the grammar, huh? To write the grammar. So we can write grammar now, right? We can write grammar that's independent of meaning. Why? Because A, A doesn't have meaning. B has no meaning because that's a, a, just a symbol. No meaning. It's detached with the meaning, not in this, all right? So we write this way. We say a sigma is alphabet, is A, B, symbols. We see that, we go back old fashion. Huh? Then we have V. Has a V is a variable we call it we have many later on with A, B. Right now we just have S because it's simple. And we have production. The production is like this. Start with symbol, it will give A. That's of this way. All right? 
Then you have a three, one, two, three, right? Well, one, two, three, you have one. Suppose the x is already in, because x can be generated from a, right? You have a s, can derive, that's another one. A's, you start with s. S is the original symbol for derivation of a string. Then s will generate b s. Not be X, because S is already in the language. S is a symbol for generation. So that corresponding to this. And this will be replaced by S. I will explain uh, uh, right away. You will see why we do this. And this vertical bar called O. O this row. So right now, we have three rows. S will generate A, corresponding to basis. Then S will generate uh, B, basically pop B to the left. We pop A onto the right and we pop B from the right. We have three productions plus this one, we have four production rules. Right? So we give an example of grammar now. Very, very useful for computer language. Right? And you will like it. And Jimmy was talking to me this uh, morning. He said that, you know, many people did not take this class. They just don't understand it. So important. And all the computers based on this theory. All right, computers. All the computers are based on computers. So let's we define that, all right? Define a grammar G as a four tuple, which is B, all right? Sigma is alphabet, that's sigma, and a starting symbol and a production. Production is right there, all right? Then is a context three. Grammar, grammar, context three grammar, CFT, later we just call CFT. If V is a finite set of variables, Those are the variables. Right now, the only one. Later on, we have others. All right? But variables and the sigma is a finite set of terminal. We introduced two terms already, right? Terminal. And those are very important, huh? V has the variables and the sigma has terminals. Terminal basically can appear in the final string, right? Variable you have to let it generate until you get all the theory, right? And let me put P. P is a finite set of We already talk about productions, right? But for a context three language, CFG, uh, of the form, we have only one kind of form that allowed, all right? Not all the form, one kind of form is that A variable go to string alpha, where A is a variable in V. Uh, right now, so V is like A, could it be A, uh, could it be B, could it be capital, we typically use capital. Uh, for variables. And alpha is a string of, uh, of variables and uh, terminals. And I do a stop. Put this together, variable and the terminals and put together, and do a stop means any lens, any lens of finite lens, right? So we have that, we define kind of free language. A kind of free grammar, sorry. <laughs> Grammar, CFG is defined that way. So pretty simple, right? And uh, and we'll we'll give an example uh, later on. And let's do the country free grammar, right? And we start to introduce post derive. And derive using grammar G means from a string to alpha to string beta. 
alpha, we let alpha drives beta in one step. One step, alpha drives beta. Right. For example, we have a BSA drive in the grammar G B A A. What do you mean by that? Suppose I have this one, right? And S can generate that B. That's our previous uh, uh, grammar, right? So A can generate A or generate B. And right now, it says that A can generate A. Uh, S can be replaced by A. I replace S by A. B is still the same. A is still the same. And A replace generate A. A that's the law, all right? So that law can be used here that using that production for that lemma G, I can drive that way. All right, told me no, don't change it. You just have a single variable on the left, it's called the context three because you don't have two variables here. Context three really means that single variable on the left in the product. Then this is the context three alone and generate that A, all right? Then we have so that alpha will generate beta, right? And another definition is stop. Same, but a number of steps. Alpha derives beta in zero or more steps. I just one step, I can write this one, but you'll be a one, zero, or any number. It means alpha, beta could be the same than zero, zero number. That's the star means I do not want to tell you how many steps. I still can write that one, right? So now let's move definition uh, in the books, chapter seven. What do we mean by the language generally, right? And those languages are very important. So if you talk about the C language, like the Java languages, and they're all governed by those laws, extremely important, all right? And actually, your program is generated, all right? By grammar G is, the language generated by grammar G is denoted by, the language generated by grammar G is, consists of all kind of string in X, all right? And X is a string of terminals and S drive the X in any number of steps according to that. See that? Is it pretty? Very clean. See that? I don't write English. Basically, I just write it in steps. All the strings from terminals and start with S. Start with S. Right? The S start with the loop. And you try any number of times according to the production rules and P, then you generate the X. All the X that generalizable, and you have that language. Right. How many strings you have? Typically, infinite many. Infinite many in, in a very typical situation. Because, like, uh, uh, how many programs you can write uh, using C language? Infinite many, right? But at any time of your finite life, you have a finite number of programs you can write. <laughs> but in principle, there are infinitely many programs you can write. So number of X in that language typically infinite. All right? So let's look at the example. Suppose I have sigma from A B. Huh? And the language is all kind of x from sigma x is not a what palindrome and what does palindrome palindrome is a string that reads from left to right or read right from left to left I like it forward order or back order, then what you read is the same, basically. Right? And 
I get the ground for this. It's not a paradox, right? So let's do this. V, I need a three letters. I will give them to S, A, D, right? And the palindrome is a palindrome. You read from left to right, huh? and from right to left. Counting sequences, uh, you have two sequences, right? The sequences are the same. Right. So, A, B, B, A. Is that palindrome? A, B, B, A. From left. From right. A, B, B, A. The same. So, A, B, B, A is palindrome. Anybody? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. A is a palindrome. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Empty string is a palindrome. I think so. Okay. Because it don't, the string is empty. All right. What about BBA? Palindrome or not? Nope. Any questions? We already defined paradigm. We already have some examples. All right. So let's look at the paradigm first. I want to say that I want to generate the paradigm first for the EA or the pair. All right. I use the loop. S will generate empty string and S will pop A and B from behind, from both sides. Huh? And I want to generate all the legal all the legal ones I can pop. This is B A will pop B on the both side. All right? And I, oh I'm sorry, I, I missed that one. And A here. That should be A, huh? So I will pop A on the both side and I have B for both side and I will generate also A, I will generate also B. It's called pair. All right, so give me example, suppose I use S will give you what? S will give you AA, uh, just that. And I use, uh, I use double so that it becomes legal. All right, I use double and that, that I pop B coming out. So A is there, A is there. Then I have this one become B, so B, S, B, you see that, All right? Then I will, Generate at the end, what? Well, I can generate one more. A, B, this S and this is called A, S, A, B, A. You see that? I use this row. Here I use this row once, I use this row again, I use this row again, all right? Then I generate A, B, A, A. I use this row. A, B, A. Is that better, John? Is that paradigm? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So does this pair include all the paradigm? Think about it. Yes. You need to you need to talk about the even lens and all lens. Very important. No, because you only have even length palindromes. That palindrome Never. right there is odd. Uh, so if without we that one, one, without that one, you have even number, right? Yeah. Because this one will generate two at a time, basically. With that one, you will generate one more. But it's also important that S can go to lambda because otherwise you couldn't get any of the even lambda. Yeah, without that one, you, you only generate all land palindrome, right? Without that one, without lambda. Without lambda, you only generate all number of paradigms, uh, paradigms of all them. 
And without these two, you generate all the uh, palindromes of uh, even length. And with both, with both, you generate odd numbers and even numbers, including zero. Objections? Any objections? All right, very good. All right, it's called PAL. Uh, and this technique is very useful when you do homework. All right, remember lambda. Then we want to say not parallel, non pair. Not parallel. That's harder. Pair is easier. All right, non parallel means that I cannot have any parallel inside. And I, I want to include all the non palindrome I cannot miss them. No more, no, uh, no less. I repeat again, huh? so it's not that easy. And I want to explain how you can screw up. I want to make sure I screwed up certain points. So let's do this. S will pop A on both sides, and I will pop B on both sides, and I switch to A. A is the time you screw up. I will pop A, B, asymmetric. I will be, I will pop A and B, that's not match, and I will switch to B, right? So I need to at least, I need to screw up once. I screw up. A is screwed up, except A and B, B and A, right? And after that, B. What do you need to be for? Anybody? I already screwed up. And I know that as long as you degenerate all the terminals, I know that it's not a pedagogy, right? And did I miss any non pedagogy? Think about it. I write it down. A is garbage, basically, from A and B, basically. I get an A and then B, I can disappear. So B will generate all the parts of A and B, including zero lens, and A is scooter, all right? And, and why we are need this? Think about it. You check any string, you check from left, right. You reach that no match point, no match point must be A, all right? So this is called num pair, all right? Now go back check, very important, all right? Check whether it's an impel, it's true or not. If it's not true, talk to me. This is not the way. We have some back inside, all right? Then I would really, really like to talk to you. Then this is, you said it's a C language, right? So important, a pair language. Let's do a subset of C expressions. It's not toys, we're not talking about toys. Very, very important to do this. C expression. All right. So a C expression would define, instead of a, a letter, we use English word. Finally, right? That's like a single, you like a Then you have the primary, you can have a, this is like sign, and you have expression. Expression, is like I use underscore so you can see the or minus expression. Okay, so this is like the book and expression minus expression because plus plus expression. Yeah. Those expressions get considered available, right? And we just make it longer so that it can it can be better, all right? And da da da. All right. Then we define expression, basically. All right, we define expression, and we start with primary. See, um, so basically, I will get a C expression. I do this here. Right. Then expression is available. They don't use they don't use arrow. They just use co uh, uh, column. That's okay. This is just used to use column. Column one consider like arrow, right? just like that. 
Then he says, like, this is like a basis. Then basis can be, this is like, like A, uh, like A is here. And this expression will generate pop left with that sign. And this expression will pop uh, minus over there. And this will pop to plus. So this is like, this way is like our, our A. And this is like A, this is like A, this is like A. And this is a primary, which is another, another definition, right? And primary could be other numbers. And number you need another uh, a set of rules to define, right? So I'd like to give you an example that how you can do it using another tool that called diagram, right? Diagram is easier than this one. Suppose that E for expression, right? So E is expression, right? This E will be easier to see. Like e will be something like this. This is very typical in the diagram when you, so this is a P for primary, huh? P for primary. And then you do this. Contest three, then which can do this. Then you have uh, the end sign. You see that then? All right? End sign followed by expression. Then you go back to there because this is like I finished that A. Right? Then I have another one here. I do minus sign. And I do expression. Ooh, like that. And that one is like I have a, a plus plus. plus, plus. And plus also has two sides. And I still do to be like that. So, in other words, I have a bop, 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 bop here. Huh? So, in other words, instead of using that one, you can use a use a, a diagram to see how the E can be defined. This diagram corresponds to the production here, right? This is like the production. All right, then I want to go back to our original uh, example. What kind of language generated by the grammar? Oh, Anybody? Suppose I have this grammar, all right? And we had a, quite a few examples before. If this is the context free grammar, what does it generate? You want to think about it. It can disappear, S can disappear. And S can pop A on both sides, can pop B on both sides, any number. This row, this row can be used in any order. All right. So A is the set of strings, right? Of sigma. Sigma is A B because you have A B. that are what? Even length palindromes? Yeah, thank you. Palindromes, huh? Yeah, thank you, very smart. Palindromes of even lengths. Why even lengths? There's no way to get rid of S without adding two or zero new characters. And those exactly. Are cool. So you get Still rid even. of S only way it just disappear, but each time you pop two, even less. All right? Very good. Pay attention to detail, all right? All right, very good. So now let's go to regular grammar. We all learn, well, now we have a grammar now, the regular grammar. We have contest free grammar already defined. All right, we talk about regular grammar. Regular grammar is, is like contest free grammar, but there is a particular description, all right? Regular grammar 
definition in the book is called 4.13, right? Let our tuple G equals the set of variables, terminals, starting symbol production B, a countless free grammar, right? And further G is called a regular grammar, right? Regular grammar. We have more restrictions called regular grammar, huh? regular grammar. If every production is more restricted, is of one of the two forms. Right, more restricted. Either A will derive AB. That's one, all right? And uh, or B can disappear, all right? Then we, we, we use this definition because it depends on books. There is another definition. Say A will go to A, B, or A can be a single A. That's another. Another definition in some textbook, and we use that one, all right? So basically, the A will get A. So basically, start A state like F A. Uh, start A, once you have A input, it go to state B. And if B is double circle, you disappear. All right, and these are very similar. These are very similar. So that's a kind of free grammar. If we have a special form, only have a, a single, uh, uh, only single terminal on the left side, and this must be a, a non-terminal, then you have a, a, a regular grammar, all right? And uh, I think, our time is up. Any questions? So today we learned um, the remaining part of uh, emerging defaulting uh, um, FA. Then we learned the contest free grammar and a special contest free grammar is regular grammar. All right. Uh, the regular grammar corresponding to uh, FA. I will talk about that later. All right. Because that's like state A with A input go to state B. And if B is double cycle, you disappear. You start with the starting symbol. All right. All right. Thank you. I was done up uh, some homework problem. All right. Uh, right after, and it's due a week from now. All right. So we have three parts: last class, this class, and this Thursday's class. Three parts. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. If you have a question, you can remain and I'm happy to answer your questions.